It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 493, Nightmares of a Perfectionist, by Joshua Fields Milburn of TheMinimalist.com, and I'm Justin Mollock. Welcome back, or welcome for the first time. This is where I read to you every single day to help you live a more meaningful life. And who better to read than The Minimalists on Minimalist Monday, especially since they're all about living a meaningful life. By the way, they just left on their tour. I'll be at their stop in Los Angeles, so definitely check that out. See if they're coming to a city near you. Just go to lessisnow.com. And before we jump into their essay, big thanks to Audible for supporting this podcast. You can get an audiobook completely free with a 30-day free trial if you go to audible.com slash old. I'll give you a great idea for an audiobook to get to, but for now, just remember to visit audible.com slash old to get an audiobook and trial for free. Now let's get right to today's Minimalist Monday post and start optimizing your life. Nightmares of a Perfectionist by Joshua Fields Milburn of TheMinimalist.com Perfectionism is a futile endeavor. As a perfectionist, I speak from experience, and this is my confessionary hymn. At times, my perfectionism haunts me. All the pleasure of getting it right can be immediately wiped out by small, debilitating imperfections the sharp stabbing pain of a negative criticism, the disappointment of a brightly illuminated flaw, the vitriolic feeling brought forth by a set of rolled eyes. Our culture reinforces certain standards we cannot live up to. The women with their half-a-serving hips adorning the covers of magazines, the expensively dressed celebutants wearing an average person's annual salary on her wrist, the modern-day rock stars and Fonzarellis plastered all over billboards and TV screens. Attempting to keep up with these false standards is tantamount to playing a rigged game. The game of perfectionism is designed for failure, and even if we could win at this game, it wouldn't make us happy. Contentment comes from within, not from the entrapment of protruding hip bones or the bling-bling of consumer purchases. And yet, we continue to play this game with religious devotion, myself included. Everyone is subject to public scrutiny at some level. Once your thoughts exit your mouth, people will judge you. Once a creation, a new book, a work project, a term paper is released to the world, even its most subtle flaws are glaring. But we can't hide every thought, hold back every word, restrain every impulse. And the fact that we can't mask all our imperfections is actually a good thing. That's because our faults improve us. They help us grow. Once we put our individual problems out in the open, they are far more noticeable and thus we feel compelled to address those problems. For example, I've noticed this phenomenon within myself and this website. By writing about my life, my transformations, and my continued pursuit of personal refinement, I've put myself out there, as it were. Many of you know more about me than certain members of my family do. Ergo, my public display of self forces me to grow in ways I wouldn't otherwise grow, allowing me to learn important new lessons about life. The truth is that we are all imperfect, and if I waited for everything to be perfect, I'd be waiting in perpetuity and my writings would never exist. So instead, I write and then release it to the world, warts and all. Consequently, I've learned a valuable lesson by exposing my blemishes to the world. I've learned to be happy with my efforts and my growth, not with perfection. Truth be told, I work incredibly hard on everything I do and I'm proud of that fact. It is exciting and gratifying to write these words for you, to create something from nothing. Everything I do is inherently imperfect, but I'm happy when I can look myself in the mirror and know it's the absolute best I can do. Similarly, it's just as gratifying to share what I've learned about writing with the students in my online writing class, opening myself up in yet another way, airing out my flaws in front of an intimate audience, finding new ways to learn and prosper. Irrespective of the arena, whenever I air out my flaws, I grow. I think the same goes for all other areas of life too. Health. If you want a perfect body, you'll never have it. Instead, you can focus on having a better body. You can focus on having a healthier body while enjoying the process of exercising and strengthening your health. Relationships. If you're looking for the perfect partner or friend or coworker, you'll lose every time. People are, by nature, imperfect. We come equipped with a tackle box of flaws. But instead of focusing on the faults, You can focus on making your relationships better and on establishing new, empowering relationships. Passions. If you're looking for the perfect job, it's not out there. 
No matter your vocation, even if you land your dream job in which you pursue your passions every day, there will be moments of despair, moments of tedium, moments of doubt, but that's okay. Instead of those moments, you can focus on the joy experienced by cultivating your passions. You can focus on the fulfillment you get from improving everything you do in tiny ways each day. Every area of life is filled with imperfection, but we need to neurose over every blemish. I am not, however, advocating being average. The average person is not happy with his life. I refuse to be run of the mill. I'd rather fail miserably than saunter down the alley of mediocrity. Instead, I'm advocating passionately pursuing what you love and doing so with vigor, knowing that there will be shortcomings and mistakes along the way. I'm advocating learning from those feelings, even appreciating them, because they allow you to grow. And that's what life is about. Over time, I've learned to take feedback for what it is. Sure, there are some cynics and hypocritical assholes out there, and I've learned to pay them no mind, although that's not always easy. But most people who provide advice are simply attempting to help. They are contributing to the greater good. This feedback allows us to evolve, it allows us to expand and live more meaningful lives. That doesn't mean that I apply every bit of feedback I receive, but I do consider the meaningful, value-adding observations and take action accordingly. I've also learned how to better deal with imperfection. I've learned to do three simple things to change my state when I feel overwhelmed or bothered by my foibles. Breathe. When stress knocks on my door, I'll take a walk and focus on my breathing. Deep, diaphragmatic breaths change our physiology, calm us, and provide our bodies with the oxygen we need. Focus. If we focus on the negative, we'll feel fear, loneliness, jealousy, and every other negative emotion we can conjure from within. Conversely, if we focus on the positive, we'll feel joy, happiness, and contentment. Much of how we feel is directly associated to what we focus on. Beliefs. Similarly, whatever we believe becomes a reality. If we believe people are rotten and hateful, then we'll find all the flaws in even the nicest people. But if we believe people are kind and caring, then we'll find glimpses of perfection in every miscreant and reprobate. The same is true for any event or situation in which we are involved. It is whatever we believe it is. You just listened to the post titled Nightmares of a Perfectionist by Joshua Fields Milburn of TheMinimalist.com. Once again, please join me in thanking Audible for helping to keep this podcast alive for all of us. I use Audible, I've been listening to language courses, but recently I've become a published narrator on Audible, it's a crazy thing. My most recent work is the book, Everything That Remains by, guess who, The Minimalist. That audiobook came out just a couple of months ago and it's really cool because, well first it's written by The Minimalist who are featured here on this show regularly and it's narrated by me, but it's written differently. It has notes from Ryan Nicodemus, the other minimalist, And with the physical book, you gotta flip to the end of the book to read those notes. But with audio, I simply inserted his comments in using a vocal effect. It's really cool. So anyway, you can get that book completely for free and keep it. It's yours to keep if you get a free 30-day trial with Audible. Just go to audible.com slash old. If you've already read the book, I actually narrated a couple of others. You can search my name or get whatever you like. Audible has an unmatched selection of audio content. That's why I stick with them. But if you get the trial and choose one of the minimalist books, you'll be supporting the minimalist, me and Audible, a great company. So again, come by audible.com slash OLD to get a free audiobook along with your free 30-day trial. That's audible.com slash old. That's it for today. I wish you a great one. Thanks for being here. And I'll catch you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.